Okay. So in the last session, we have seen what is the base class of exceptional, which is in from Java dot lang dot throwable uh, package, and then uh, we have checked, unchecked, and runtime error. Uh, uh, three categories of the exceptions we have seen, like what do we can call really a checked exception where the compiler will be able to warn us in advance, whereas in the case of unchecked exception, it is we are supposed to deal with the situation. The two examples were shared like for file handling for the checked exceptions and uh, array index order bound or maybe a overflow of byte type the data that we have seen for unchecked exceptions. And then the error, like something happened which is beyond control of a programmer. For example, uh, the memory resource got exceeded or there is no memory to allocate, or the file is actually not present, or the disk drive crashed. So uh, such kind of exceptions which are not beyond the control of a programmer, those kind of errors are exceptions which will uh, make your program halt at a runtime. We will call them as errors. So these three broad categories we have seen in the last session. Now, while committing the last session, I said that uh, the, like, uh, there is a keyword called as through and through throws and uh, through and we can also create a user defined exception and user defined exception class so we have to understand what is a user defined exception and a user defined exception class so it will uh, we have to learn how to write our own exceptions classes and then use them in particular situation where we want which will make our application uh, give more specific exceptions if any occur during the program rather than relying on the system defined exceptions so we'll try to understand them or we'll, we will see how to do it so let me share my screen and start let's start immediately programming So, uh, is the screen visible? There is a question in chat box. How uh, I have question yesterday. I did doing packaging assignment in that. I do a forward slash b and try to return it, and then it returns infinite. Okay, what what we can do, Aditya, is today uh, at the two fifteen we have a laboratory session. Today I'll be conducting a session on B, and Capsicer and Arun Basaiser will have a session of A. So uh, in that session you could post the program or share the screen and then show me what is the problem and we'll solve that. Fine. Okay. Fine. So is uh, screen share available to everyone? Okay. Fine. So, uh, this is second dot Java file. And we are going to make use of this second dot Java file to write the program for the exception. So let me create a class called as second. I will call this class as public. Uh, now, 
a short review of what we have done in the last lecture. We we see, have seen try catch block chaining of them. We were going to do continue with the chaining again, and we have seen checked unchecked exceptions. And then uh, uh, I said that we have done something with the cloning assignment where we have to say use the keyword called as chosen through uh, while to uh, while uh, making sure that the pro program compiles and you understand that there might there is a chance of having a runtime error in your program, right? So uh, let's create one block. Let me create an array uh, in the integer. Let's say a new int, and I'll make it of size one, and then a of let's say one is equal to one. Now we know that this is a this code is ambiguous and it's going to create a problem. Okay. Uh, fine. Now, if I compile this second dot Java file, it compiles, and if I run it, we are going to have a error at the runtime, right? So this is an index out of bound exception, and but there is compiler has not done any kind of reporting for us. Now, on the other hand, uh, let's say if you want to handle a clone, and let me add that code here. Uh, let's say class A implements clone nibble. And I'm not adding any other thing. Let me say second dot Java. Fine. Public. Uh, object clone so it says unreported exception now this clone not supported falls into the category of a checked exception because your compiler is able to see that your program may run into exception and it try it makes sure that the programmer is handling the exception making program more robust and avoiding the program crash during the execution time so we call it as a check whereas the memory allocation of the array uh, here we are sure that the program is going to run into an exception during the execution time, but the compiler is not warning us of any uh, is not giving any kind of clue that this is going this may happen. So it falls under the category of unchecked exception. Also, the the overflow like you exceed the data type and you uh, cycle it from the upper limit to the lower limit, or vice versa from the lower limit to the upper limit. That is also a kind of an unchecked exception, right? So. Uh, now there is a keyword called as uh, through and the another keyword is called as throughs. Now let's understand what is the significance of this two keyword and then we will make use of uh, both of them. When exception occurs, like see here, what is the uh, exception that uh, is making our program not compilable? Uh, unreported exception, clone not uh, supported exception must be caught or declared to be thrown, declared to be thrown. And here is the code which is responsible for that. So this line may run into an exception which is clone not supported, right? And if this exception occurs at a runtime, then you have to throw the exception. Like your program has to make sure that your, uh, either you have handled it using a try and catch block or your program method is throwing the exception knowing that this may occur, right? So let's say I handled, I use this keyword, throws. 
clone not supported exception and now if we compile this okay ah uh, sorry 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 sorry, sorry. Now it works, right? It works. Like if I remove this line, if I comment on this throws clone not supported exception, I went saved it. So star symbol was there. Now if I save it, again we are getting the exception. So here, what your method is doing is that method uh, method is method called super dot clone falls under checked exception and it warns your compiler warns about you like okay you may run into this exception so now what programmer is doing is programmer is saying that okay i know that this kind of exception may occur at a run time so uh please hey compiler i know that i may run into this error at a run time but i don't want to handle it so that's what we are doing using the call throws clone not supported exception so here you are making your method capable of throwing the object of type clone not supported exception now here i used a terminology called as making a method capable of throwing the exception of type clone not supported exception now let's understand what you mean by throwing the exception right so let's say uh, let me take a help of paint and let's add two methods so this is method one and this is method two so let's say these two methods are sharing some information and that information is considered inside a object. Let's say this is the object which is carrying information and this object is originally been generated inside first method. Let me draw the line. Let's say this object is generated inside the first method and now this object is going to get sent to the method number two. So in this first method, let's say this object type is this is the object of class A, right? This is object of type class A. Um, and in the rece receiving, also this is the object of type class A. But in between, in transit, when your object is getting passed from method one, let's call this as method one. Let me use a simpler text box, method one. And here again, let me use the word method two. So in the method two, when this object is in between passing from method one to method two, whatever this action is in between that we call it as a passing object from one method to the other method, right? Passing object of one method to the other method. Now, how does your method is capable to handle the object of A? It must understand what is A. Unless and until it do not know what is the type A, then your methods are not capable of passing this object from method one to method two. Now, both methods must be in the position to understand what is the class A. If either of the method don't know what is the class A, then this transition is going to fail, right? In the same way, when there is an error going to occur in this method, if there is an error is going to occur in this method, then this method must be capable of generating the information about what error has occurred during the runtime right and how does a programmer make sure that this method understands how what kind of exception or error is occurring at a runtime is in two ways either by doing a try and catch properly or by making sure that marking the method as throws clone not supported exception or throws let's say class a represents an exception then i'll write throws a exception right so that's how we make sure that the methods understand what kind of exception may occur at a runtime and method is capable to handle it amit sir you sir to me uh, like say <coughs> you are saying clone not supported exception now if if we remove this if we remove this then your method is not able to understand what is clone not supported exception right and whereas your compiler is saying that your method is going may run into the exception called as clone not supported exception right so how you make sure that your method understand 
clone not supported exception then we add it like throws clone not supported exception and the object will get returned right so in the same way if this class a is not known to method one and method two then they are not able to handle it or they are not able to pass the object of this class a the same terminology is used by the exception right so let's use this word throw and throws now throws i make sure that my method is able to throw the object of clone not supported let's understand what you really really mean by throws okay so for that purpose we are going to create two things one is a uh, user defined exception and the second is user defined exception class let's start with user defined exception now a minute ago what we have done is uh, let's say we have integer a is equal to new int and let's say array size is 2 and i will use a of 0 is equal to 1 or let me use a for loop directly automated loop for integer i is equal to 0 i is less than or equal to 3 i plus plus and now a of let's say a of i is equal to and we assign the same index value in the location now we know that there are only two locations which is 0 and 1 and whereas we are handling four locations 0 1 2 3 right 0 1 2 and 3 so four locations we are trying to handle and so this is definitely exception right now if i want to make it correct what i'll write is here one now the program is pinpointedly correct now if we okay let me close this now if i compile this program java c second dot java the program also executes without any hassle right so it executed now let's increase the array size to five and here i'll write is equal to four so your program will be able to ha handle four locations right so it worked now what if you really don't want to use all four locations and you want your program to use only two locations so what you can do is if if i is equal to let's say after second location that is the third location you will not you don't want to allow anybody to use this so i'll what i'll write is if i reaches two then throw index out of bounds exception right now look at the code guys what we are doing is your array is capable to handle five locations five locations but we are using only two locations which is zero and one as soon as the index reaches value two you are generating an exception called as index out of bound and here i'm using keyword called as throw so what it means is that you are actually creating a new object of index out of bound which is exception class index out of bound which is a subclass under the exception category and you are throwing that object that means you are passing this object from method one to method two as per earlier pen diagram so what here happening is what here happening is your method main your main method let me use the shapes your main method which is this let's call this as a main method main method this method is creating a small object inside it and this object is of type now what is the type of this object index out of bound exception so this is the class for this object and it, it is using a keyword called as through that means this method also sending this object but now to whom to whom it is sending this object let's try to compile the program java c uh, second dot java so here uh, okay it's not supporting this one Yeah, 
and is not even supporting the index out of count. Okay, I'm, I'm making some spell mistake index out of pound exe pt one. Let me do one straight thing. Let me comment here. A of let's say five equal to one and it compiled and then so index array index out of bound. So I've not index out of bound, I have to use array index out of bound. Okay, fine. That's a silly mistake too. So let me add through array index out of bound. Now, if I try to compile, okay, cannot find symbol array double array index out of bounds. Now it has to be S bounds. Yeah, right. Out of bounds exception. Yeah, so now I can remove this. So now what we are doing is if index is going to reach value two, you are generating the object of type array index out of bound exception and you are going to throw it in the somewhere, right? So let's try to execute it. And here you can see that there is an exception occurred and exception is thread dot main in that java lang dot array index out of bound exception and the line responsible to generate this exception is line number 11 right so you can see that this is line number 11 in the notepad which is creating exception now see your uh, your array is capable to handle five locations but what we are doing is through our code we are making so, sure that there are only two locations which have been used by the array and the rest of the three locations are just wasted so now this is a valid program. Now the index two is if I just comment this code, if I just comment this code and if I if we compile it again and if we run it, there is no exception in the program. The program is super fine. But if as soon as we add this condition and if we try to compile this and run, then we have an exception, right? So this is not a system exception what we are doing is we are creating a condition which is making a program run into exception and we are intentionally doing it like we don't want the last three locations of the array to be utilized to store some data we may want to use it for some future purpose so that we want to keep it free right so depends on what is your intention you just want to make sure that the last three locations of the array are not getting utilized so in this case what we are doing is we are saying throw new array index out of bound which is a built-in exception class and it creates an exception in your program. So we call this condition as user defined exception. We call this condition as user defined exception. See, there is no as such exception in your program. Your program is very fine. But through the a call called as throw new array index or the bound exception, we are making sure that there is an exception in the program. There is an exception in the program. So this artificial condition that user is adding in your program and making that making sure that there is there is an exception thrown at a during the runtime this artificial condition which is added by user we call this condition as user defined exception right now you are throwing an object and there is nobody to catch now what we can do is we can put a try block uh, again Again, let me after try block, let me put something. Uh, so before try block and adding a try block in the program, let's print something on the screen. Uh, 
height and let's see so java c uh, have i compiled yeah okay fine now see your object is the exception is getting caught by the exception environment provided by java environment and this last line is not getting printed now what will be the effect if we add a try and proper catch block let's do it if we add proper try and catch block for our program let's say this is try the end of the try and then catch in which we'll see uh well let's catch array index of bounds exception i'll call the object as e a standard and then print stack trace to print the error stack on the screen now there is only one method in the stack so you will get a, only what has happened catch array index out of bound exception and cannot find symbol array index out oh sorry i have to write here out fine now let's compile and now let's run so here you can see that the main this is the main method in second so here we are handling the exception in the program right so the exception has been handled now we call this condition as user defined exception now let's see what is the meaning of user defined exception class right now let's say you have a something called as a class person and let's say you are collecting the voter database and you have a field called as age now you want to make sure that this age has to be compulsory 18 right this age has to be compulsory 18 if the age is not 18 then you are not a valid voter if this is the thing that we want to implement then what we can do is uh what what we will do is we'll take another notepad file rather than making the the same use of the same program so i'll go here i'll create a third third dot java notepad third dot java so let me oh sorry and close this now let's say we have class person who have a field called as age and now this age has to be compulsory 18 years old in terms to make this person able to vote now what we can do is let's say class person person could be of any age so what is your requirement is you want to allow only person who are having age more than 80 to be able to vote so what we'll do is we'll write a class third which is our operational class and in this we'll create a method like main method for execution let's add it and let's create person object new person right and let's say obj dot age is equal to 19 so this is fine this person is completely a eligible voter right so what we are going to do is we are going to create another class called as let's say uh, class age exception right age exception so now this is your class this is your class we are writing it user has defined this class and now i'm going to make sure that what i'm what i'm going to do is i'm going to say extends exception now see exception is one of the base classes in the java to deal with the exceptions like so i'm i'm extending my age exception class from exception class built-in class of java so ultimately the age exception class have all the capabilities or the features which are available in exception class now how we handle the exception let me open the second file again notepad second dot java let me open this now here is the point of focus like how we are doing is we are saying through and then i'm using new keyword you we all know that when we use new keyword that means we are trying to create an object of it right and here we have created an object of a built-in class called as array index out of bounds exception now here there is a class called as age exception right and uh when we 
create object we all know that the constructor gets called the constructor gets called so i can rely in this class by creating a constructor called as public and age exception right age exception here i'll say that i'll print the error message like age must be 18 years or above right so this is my warning message this is the message that i want to print on the screen so look at this we are our class is extending from a base class called as exception and then you are adding a constructor and then you are printing a message inside a constructor right now here you have created an object of this and let's say the person has reached the polling booth right so what we will do is in the polling booth we will say if object dot age is greater than 17 right so here i'm avoiding the greater than equal to condition is greater than 17 then fine vote has been successful okay let me use a reverse condition to avoid else block is less than 18 so if the person's age is less than 18 then through new age exception can you see this throw new age exception throw new age exception now our age of the object is 19 now let me go to the command prompt and then compile java c second dot java sorry not second we have to compile third one java c third dot java okay unreported exception exception age must be caught or declared to be thrown now fine i'm throwing exception and it has uh, like checked exception it is a kind of a checked exception because i am inheriting from the checked exception class exception so let me see see here uh better instead of saying throws in the main method i will put this code in try and catch so try log and catch let's say uh age exception e and then again we know what we what we can do with e object which is used for printing tag trace giving the information of how the sorry again i've compiled the second i have to compile third dot java so let's compile third and now execute the third dot java so execute it no problem so here but i let me add a line system dot out dot print ln completed right save this and complete it so your program does complete right let's make one change after creating the object let's change the age to 17. now age value has been changed to 17. now <clears throat> let's compile and let's try to execute and here you can see that there is a message called as age must be 18 years old or above years or above age exception at main third and then the program also completes so here you are creating a exception message now one thing to notice uh the main method itself is the only method which is in execution so that is the only object on the stack trace now there are other styles also like if you want to add some extra information you can go and add uh, another constructor exception which accepts a string like string message and then you can just display this message let's say whatever the message has come you will display the message and you can make use of this second constructor also now instead of using a default constructor i'm using uh, the parameterized constructor and here i'll call uh, i'll just pass one message age must be above 18. right let me save this let me compile 
And now let's execute. Now here you can see that the exception message has changed. It must be above 18. So now you are calling a constructor which is parameterized, and here you are passing a customized message. Now, if you are doing this, if you're having you this kind of environment, we call this as user defined exception class, where user is creating his own customized exception class. Whereas the situation that we have seen in the second dot Java file, where you are taking a help of a built in exception class and creating a customary situation, which may be valid during a normal execution, but you want to create a customized situation where the exception is thrown, then this this is a second dot Java file is giving a good example of user defined exception, user defined exception. Whereas this third dot Java file is giving a very good example of user defined exception class. So there is a pretty much clear difference between what is user defined exception and what is user defined exception class, right? And throw keyword to create an object of an exception class and then send the object from one method to other method. If your try clock and catch block is there, then they will handle it. If they are not there, Java uh, try and catch, Java environments default try and catch environment will handle it. Right. So this is a second user defined exception, third user defined exception class. I'll take a pause here before continuing. If anyone have a question in user defined exception or user defined exception class, you can unmute yourself and uh, ask me. Or you can post your question in chat box. Do you really get it? What is the user defined exception and what is user defined exception class? Okay, Aditya wants me to repeat user defined exception. Anyone else? Why new after two or Baal Zamdar? Okay, fine. Any other? What is difference between through and throughs? Okay, that's what I wanted to make clear. Let's repeat that point again. Difference between through and throughs. Any other question? So we will answer all these questions one by one. So we'll repeat. Before repeating user defined exceptions again, we will answer first why throughs and then what is the difference between through and throughs? Any other question meantime? So I can define the flow in which I should continue. Fine. I assume there are three questions that I need to answer. Uh, to answer why new after through, see, I'll, I'll take help of our own exception class mechanism. So my class age exception is my class. And I am taking help of this constructor to print the message. And we know that the constructor will be called when we create an object. And to create an object in Java, we have to make use of new keyword. So what I'm doing here is through create a new object of age exception and then pass the message, right? Throw new age exception. We can split this line by saying I want to create object of age exception a temp is equal to new age exception, which will call the exception. And then I can say H R O W through temp. So this is also fine because we are just splitting the code on multiple lines. Whereas on the last line, we are doing the same thing, right? So new keyword is used to make sure that the constructor is getting called, which will, which is responsible here to display the message. That's why I've used the new keyword because this is ultimately a class and you want to create an object of it and that object will be thrown. 
Okay, so uh, there is another question. Why not we storing the exception in a variable in through new age exception? Uh, Aditya, can you but elaborate? You can. Uh, it will be great if you want. If you type the code that you are really asking. Uh, your question is not getting uh, clear to me. Why not we storing the exception in variable? What kind of variable can you? Share the code that you want to add. Meantime, uh, new age exception. So that's what we did, right? New age exception. So, the age exception is the code. Age exception is the code. Hello, Aditya. I'm allowed to throw new exception line in a third line. Ah, okay. I'm allowed to throw a new object. So the so the same question has been asked by uh, Mr. Arbaz. To answer this, I have split the code on two lines. So this last line and these two lines are equivalent, right? Just what is going to happen is here you are going to call the constructor, so the message will be printed, and then again you are throwing the message, throwing the exception. Let me show you what will be the effect. Let me comment this, right? And on another point, I will again comment this try block code, right? Let me completely comment out this try block code. Now, if I if I sorry if I compile the program now, let me just take the chat window here. Okay, yeah, let's Java C uh, dot Java. You can see the program compiled perfectly and it executed, and you get a message: age must be 18 years above. So you are you are creating an object, and which is printing an exception, but it is not really an exception condition. But because what you have done is you have just created an object of it object of it and java do not recognize this as an exception because let's see have you seen any print message print stack uh, trace message mr arbas please uh, you also concentrate on this can you see any uh, print stack trace trail here do you seeing the main method and the exception kind of a messaging by java no because it is simple object and in the constructor of the object the message is getting printed let me add this through before adding it, see how it worked, compiled first of all, and then in the exception, you got the message. Now I'm saying through temp. What is temp? Temp is an object of age exception, and I'm trying to throw it. Now let me try. And here it says that unreported exception, age exception must be caught, declared to be thrown or throws. So here I have an option throws age exception like what we did for the clone not supported exception. And that time I said that I will explain this story when we will deal with the exception. So I have an option of saying throws age exception, right? Now here, Miss Mansi, I'm answering your, your doubt also. So what do you mean by throws age exception and through? What is the difference between this through and throws is? This keyword is used to inform compiler that method knows that there is a, there is a possibility that the exception may occur and method is capable to handle the age exception. Method is capable to handle age exception. And it will throw the object of that age exception to uh, the Java environment, or maybe there is a try and catch. Right now, there is no try catch block. That's why we have to use this line. So throws age exception is a message to the compiler that programmer is well aware of that the method may run into exception. So that is the message, throws age exception. This is a information to the compiler flag programmer is aware of the method may throw an object of type age exception, right? So throws age exception. So that is the information and method is capable to do that. If we remove this, if we remove this, then it means that compiler has to generate a warning. What warning? That there is a, there is a possibility of exception. In fact, the, there is a possibility that your program may run into exception and better, you must caught it. How we catch exception using try and catch 
or we must declare it to be thrown, which is using throws keyword. Earlier we did that. Now what I'll do is I'll put a try and catch block. Let me use try and then catch. Now as soon as I use try and catch block, and if I compile this, then program compiles. Oh, so let me go to the chat window and see there were three questions, right? Okay, have I answered all three questions? Mr. Arbaz, have I answered your question? Okay, great. Then Miss Mansi. Okay, and Aditya, I guess uh, we have already said what, what, what is the use of this, right? Great. So this is about the user-defined exception and user-defined exception class. Then, Immediately a short story. Like now, let me create another. Now I don't want to mix up these all concepts. Let's just understand chaining of try and catch. All right. So let me save this and create another file called as Notepad. Notepad. Let me call it as Fort. Fort. Okay. Fort dot Java. Fine. Now class. And public static void main Let's say that we have one try block doing some code. Uh, let's say print one line system dot out dot print align. Let's call it as in try. Then we have catch block, which will call, let's say it accepts array index out of bounds exception E, a very specific exception. And then here E dot print tag trace, right? Now there is no exception, nothing is going to go wrong. So let's compile Java food, Java and Java food, right? So it in try, it compiles and executes. Now let's create a array index out of bound, new. Now you all know that what I'm doing, I'm just instead of writing a code which will really generate exception, I'm doing an exception of type array. Go new array index out of bounds. I'm really adding the code manually to generate exception and I cannot find symbol array index out of bounds. I make, yeah, so I have to add this exception and then compiles and then Java, let's say food, food class. And then we have an exception in the program, right? Now, let's say system dot out dot print ln test, and we know that it's going to work. So this is test. What if your program do not generate a index out of bound exception and it generates an arithmetic exception? Throws go new exception. It generates an arithmetic exception. So, I uh, cannot find arithmetic. Let me simply, rather than going into the spelling, you know, let me. I is equal to one, integer k is equal to zero, simple i by k will generate exception, not a valid statement. Divide by k i is equal to i is equal to i by k, fine. And now arithmetic exception, right? So we have a arithmetic exception. Yeah, I made a mistake. I'm... So 
now your program has crashed. Like, see, there was a output. Okay, let me repeat this. Oh, new arithmetic exception. Java C compiled. Before this exception, even if there was an array index out of bound exception, and if the exception occurred, your program was trending, this is the test. So your program do handle the exception, right? Let me comment this and generate exception of type arithmetic, and your program is not able to handle it, right? So it, it just crashed, right? So what we can do is we can add another cache block which handles arithmetic exception E. Arithmetic exception. And now the program runs. What if other kind of exception occurs, which is not handled by you? For example, file not found, right? So again, your program is going to catch, uh, stores, not catch, your program is going to get interrupted. So here, what you can do is you can simply add exception E, which call will make sure that your program doesn't halt it keep on running even if any kind of exception occurs being print stack trace we have added three catch blocks to the one try block so that is possible you can add as many try blo uh, catch blocks as you want but there has to be only one finally block which will be associated with one try block so every try block can have only one finally block associated with it and in this, I'll write the code, let's say println. Here, let's write, this is finally block, right? And we know that this block is going to execute in situation whether the exception occurs or exception do not occur. In the both case, uh, cases, the finally block is going to get executed. Let me remove this two cache blocks. Just keep only one for the understanding purpose. Now I have a question. If let's say if if something goes wrong here, let's say in the catch in the catch block exception occurred because of your coding. Like say you are trying to do something instead of printing a stack trace, you are trying to do something and the code there is an exception. So first of all, okay, error unreachable statement, right? So it will let me put a comment to this line, unreachable code. Now program compiles and here you can see that this is finally block executed, right? So the finally block has executed as there is ex there was exception you came to the try catch block in the catch block you printed the stack trace and there is also arithmetic exception you can see that the arithmetic exception is printed but the finally block has executed finally block executed but what happens if this condition occurs in finally itself that too before printing any message on the screen what will happen whether the finally will work Okay, have I made any mistake? Yeah, so unreachable code. <laughs> so let me put a comment and see. So finally, block will execute only if there is no exception inside it. To make it make a sense, what I will do is instead of having this unreachable code problem, I'll create variables inti is equal to zero int k uh, is equal to one and k is equal to k by i is the code. Now let's compile this. And now you can see that there is no output. What is output expected? The finally block. This finally block is not printed. If I remove this exception part and if we save this and if we compile, if we compile now, you get this as a finally block. So fi finally blocks are supposed to execute in all the condition. What it means is that if exception occurs in try block, if exception occurs in the catch block, 
doesn't make any problem to the finally block. But if something goes wrong in the finally block itself, then finally will stop execution. Keep that in mind. Second, second thing, let me remove this is the test message and simply even avoid writing a catch block. We have only try, we have only try and some code, let's say system dot out dot print align. Some code, maybe an exception code even, and we have only finally block. Now, if we try to compile, it should compile, right? And even it will work. Code. So there is no compulsion that the try, try uh, block must have a catch block associated with it. So you can simply put a finally block alongside a try block. Now, if I just put only try block and compile this, then sorry, I have, I have, I have add. Okay, fine. Now here, there is no error of curly bracket. The error says that we have a catch or finally. Huh? So you should associate a finally block or you should associate a catch block. It's totally up to you. Like you can directly assign a finally block to the try block. And another point, with one catch, there will be only one finally block, right? Let me, now we have added two finally blocks, right? Finally, without try. Now error has changed for the last finally clause, Like right? It is saying that finally without try. So a one try block can, has, can have as many as catch blocks you want. So you can add n number of catch blocks along with one try block but there will be only one finally block with one try block. Second, <coughs> sorry, another point is you can nest try and catch. So in, inside the try block, <coughs> you can do like this, try, catch, and you can even have finally block. Sometimes students say that there is only one finally block per program. That's not right. There is only one finally block per try. Keep that in mind. So if your program have multiple try blocks, you will have multiple finally blocks in your program. Another thing. Oh, I have exceeded my time 10.6. Okay, I'll continue with this point in the lab session today evening. You people can quit and join the next session. Sorry. I exceeded the time. We should stop.